We will now finish the uh, story uh, that is told in Acts, the major themes and content that in Acts. We're looking at Acts 13 through the end of the book. Starting here in Acts 13, Paul, Barnabas, and John Mark are sent by the church in Antioch on their first missionary trip, which will take them to Cyprus and to Asia Minor. Uh, when they arrive in Asia Minor, uh, John will return home. The uh, uh, Acts does not tell us why uh, John Mark told uh, went home. Uh, it does seem to be that this was not a, a desirable thing to happen. Uh, later on, it will become an issue of conflict between Barnabas, who is a cousin of John Mark, and Paul, whether or not they're going to take him on a second trip. But uh, he returns home, and that seems to be a very big disappointment, at least to Paul. Paul and Barnabas are successful in evangelizing Asia Minor and establishing church with elders. In Jerusalem, a meeting is held between apostles and elders to dis discuss whether or not Gentile Christians have to become Jews. And by that, again, it's focusing on the issue Paul and Barnabas was not requiring Gentiles to be circumcised. And since many Jews would understand being the people of God means coming under the Abrahamic covenant, since Abrahamic covenant includes circumcision, not being circumcised is an indication that uh, one is not under that covenant. And so this is a real conflict in terms of language and how one can uh, call themselves the people of God and not use the historic biblical definitions of people of God. It is determined that Gentile Christians do not have to become Jews, do not have to be circumcised, but they must refrain from practices that were associated with Gentile paganism, that is, uh, that was associated with idolatrous worship. So they can't worship idols, uh, they can't be involved in fornication, they can't be involved in eating blood, and sometimes the eating of blood was done in uh, temple worships where one was able to gain the power of the God by having the sacrifice, uh, the animal sacrifice made to the God. Uh, the blood is still in the animal. By eating the blood, one kind of joins with that God and can uh, get that God's uh, power or blessing. And so no eating of blood, no fornication. Um, and so uh, you stay away from foods that are strangled, that is food that still has blood in it. So for Jews, they're very concerned that the practices that are often associated with Gentile pagan behaviors, that these uh, Gentiles will show that they are not going to accept Jesus as Messiah and continue on in pagan idolatrous worship. The news of this acceptance of Gentiles then is received gladly by the church in Antioch course for uh, certainly for many uh, Gentiles the idea of being circumcised was repulsive uh, being circumcised would even seem to be uh, kind of unnatural uh, and it was aesthetically uh, unpleasing uh, and so for several reasons Gentiles saw being circumcised as really being a, a turning on one's back on one's culture and they did not want to uh, uh, be involved in that but uh, they were willing to reject paganism, were willing to reject uh, idolatry, but did not want to have to submit to circumcision. Paul and Barnabas then are set, sent out by Antioch, by the Antioch church, this is Antioch in Syria, on a second missionary trip, but Paul does not want to take John Mark for the reasons that I just made mention earlier, because he deserted them or left them um, on that first trip. Uh, Barnabas does want to take him, and so the d decision made that Barnabas will take John Mark and they'll go to Cyprus. Barnabas is actually, um, his background is from Cyprus, and so it makes a lot of sense for him to go back there. While Paul is going to take Silas and go into Asia Minor, of course Paul is from Tarsus, Tarsus is in Asia Minor, so it just made strategic sense that Paul would go back to the area, the geographical area he was most familiar with, and Barnabas went back to basically his uh, home region. 
Paul is, after he takes Silas and goes into Asia Minor, uh, he's going to be later on joined by a young convert by the name of Timothy. After going through Asia Minor, Paul uh, is team, he has several individuals with him, uh, will go into Macedonia and Greece. This is where we get in, start getting into some of the, the uh, we language, so it looks like maybe uh, Luke uh, has joined Paul during this time. Leaving Corinth, Paul's team goes to Ephesus, uh, where he leaves Priscilla and Aquila, and these are two people who had come from Rome. They had been, they were already Christians. They had been expelled from Rome along with other uh, Jews who followed Christ, and uh, they met Paul in Corinth and had traveled with Paul to Ephesus. But he leaves. Priscilla and Aquila, a husband-wife team, in Ephesus, and uh, he is going to go on to Caesarea, and then Jerusalem, and finally in back, in back in Antioch. Paul sets out for his third missionary journey. Then, in chapter 18, he goes back to Galatia, this province in in Asia Minor, present-day Turkey, and uh, in order to strengthen the disciples there. In Ephesus, we're told now about Priscilla and Aquila, this husband-wife team who instructs an Alexandrian Jewish disciple. Um, the city of Alexandria in northern Egypt was a place heavily populated with Jews. It was one of the, the second most populated places of the Jews, maybe outside of Babylon, uh, outside then of, of Palestine. Um, it was a large colony of, of Jews. And so uh, Apollos comes from Alexandria. He has come to Ephesus. Uh, he knows something about Jesus, but he does not understand Christian baptism. And uh, Priscilla and Aquila instruct him um, about it. Uh, and then he is sent to Achaia to strengthen churches. Paul ends up in Ephesus and spends roughly three years there until a riot uh, erupts, and Paul is sent off to Macedonia and Greece, again sent off by uh, Christians. They are concerned for Paul's life. And uh, so Paul goes back to uh, Macedonia and Greece, uh, ending back up in Troas. Troas is uh, just, is in Asia Minor, just before you would cross into uh, present-day Greece. While in Troas, Paul uh, raises from the dead a person by the name of Eutychus, uh, who had fallen asleep while uh, Paul preached. It may be that it was late in the evenings. Mark, Luke gives us a little bit of an indication that possibly there were several candles that were burning, creating a very kind of warm client, uh, climate. Uh, and so that may have been part of the cause for Eutychus falling asleep. But uh, he falls from this kind of second story window, um, and uh, Paul then revives him. Paul says farewell to the Ephesian elders and warns them of false teachers who will be coming and possibly even coming among the elders themselves. Paul arrives in Tyre, which is on the western coast of Israel or Palestine. He will travel to uh, Ptolemais and once again back to Caesarea. Caesarea seems to be a place where there are, are has been uh, develop a Christian community. Uh, we know Philip will eventually has ended up in Caesarea. We know Peter has uh, ends up in Caesarea. So in Caesarea, the, a Christian prophet named uh, Agabus, who we had met earlier on in, in Antioch, uh, he now foretells about Paul's arrest in Jerusalem. And despite those who urge him not to go, uh, Paul travels to Jerusalem and stays in the home of a Christian Cyprian uh, named uh, uh, Mason. And interestingly here about the prophecy and about the actions of the Christians, even though it's prophesied that Paul goes to Jerusalem and will be arrested, it is not seen as, as predetermined. In other words, that if he go, he, he, he has to go, he has no other choice. Uh, and that is why then they are warning him not to go. There, this understanding that prophecy indicates what will happen if certain other events take place. So they think that they can change the course of the future if uh, if Paul will not go to Jerusalem. 
And then in the final uh, chapters of Acts, uh, Paul is welcomed by the church in Jerusalem and, Je and James, Jesus' brother. Paul's presence and preaching sparked a riot among non-Christian Jews and he was nearly killed before being rescued by Roman soldiers. After being flogged by the Romans, Paul is brought before the Sanhedrin, whom he divides by his, by his reference to the resurrection of the dead. The Sanhedrin is made of both of, of Sadducees, who do not believe that a person can be raised from the dead, or does not believe that there are living spirits that can communicate with um, people on earth, whereas the Pharisees do believe in spirits or individuals who can communicate that there is potential for ongoing revelation um, and uh, do believe that someone can be raised from the dead. Paul is taken uh, into Roman custody. Uh, he is removed to Caesarea and appears before the Judean procurators Felix. Uh, those are his dates between AD 53 to 58 and Festus, AD 58-62, as well as Herod Agrippa II. Festus and Agrippa agree that Paul is innocent of all of any civil crimes, but since Paul did appeal to Caesar, as was his right since he was a, a Roman citizen, they sent him on to Rome. Acts 27 and 28 detail Paul's deadly voyage to Rome, um, including being shipwrecked on the Isle of Malta, and how he spent his time in Rome while awaiting his trial before Nero. And so this really kind of brings us to the end of the story that is told in the book of Acts.